Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our channels. In this video, we're going to talk about how to replenish non-stock kits. So non-stock kits are essentially kits that you can put on a sales order and the components of the kits or the kit specifications are things that will be deducted when you go to ship out that particular shipment. So let's say there's three components and there's various quantities on that kit that you have on a sales order. Those components will be deducted when you ship out. So let's create one and then we'll talk about replenishment. We'll create a laptop bundle. So this will be like a laptop bundle that has a few various accessories that we're throwing in that customers can buy directly. But because it's a non-stock kit, again, we're not going to pre-assemble these because we don't know how many we're going to sell. So pre-assembly would be a stock kit where we go through a kit assembly process. In this case, if a customer buys it, we're going to let our picker actually take care of putting all these items together on the way out the door. So we'll pick a non-stock item class. Give it a price. We'll go back and check off is a kit and we'll save it. Now we'll go over to kit specifications. We'll bring up our laptop bundle. We'll give it a revision and we'll add our stock components. We need one laptop. We'll add a laptop bag, one of them, and we'll add a mouse. And we'll save it. Now, it's important to note that all of these items, in order for distribution requirements planning to work, we need these all to be set up accordingly. So while the kit itself is non-stock, the individual items need to be part of this planning method of DRP. So if you're familiar with Acumatica, you know that we use something called inventory replenishment. We have for many years. And if it's set to that, if the items are set to that, then under inventory planning, the tab name is changed, by the way, you'll see this very similar screen where you can set up your replenishment class, you can do seasonality, your method is going to be purchase. So if we're out of stock, we want to purchase this as opposed to transfer or drop ship or something. We are using the mid-max method as opposed to fixed reorder quantity where we set a, a specific quantity to reorder every time we fall below the reorder point. So we have all these different settings. We also have the ability to analyze, for example, in this case, six months worth of sales to determine our daily sales average to determine how many do we need to keep in stock. We can use that to set the reorder points. But all of that is our inventory replenishment. If we switch and keep our items on DRP in order to use this, and we go back to inventory planning, then our settings are a little bit simpler. And here we can determine how do we want to replenish? What's the source of our replenishment? In this case, it's going to be purchase. And where is the source warehouse that we're going to ship to? What is our safety stock? All of these things we can keep at zero for the purposes of this demonstration. But safety stock and reorder points we can set to make sure that the system always keeps some of these on hand in case we need to sell them right away. So we're going to keep these all at DRP. So if I save and close, all of these other items have been already set for DRP. Now, if we go in and we create a sales order, we'll add our laptop bundle, and this customer is going to be buying, let's say, five of them. We'll save it. And now we produced a demand. Now, because it's a non-stock kit, non-stock item, you don't see the availability here. 
Now, if we go to this new screen called Regenerate Inventory Planning, and we click on Process, this you can schedule this to run every so often. It will take into consideration these kit items in that we need to purchase them. So those particular items I just created on the kit specification, they're not in stock. There's no availability. So regenerate inventory planning will plan those items for purchase because that's how we define those items. You saw in the inventory planning screen, we had them set as a source for purchasing. We're going to run out of stock in order to complete the sales order so the system knows better. So now if we go to inventory planning, display, you can see Acumatica shows us that we're going to need these three items in order to complete and ship this particular non-stock kit out the door on that sales order. So from here, what we can do is we can check off all of these items and we can click purchase. But before we do that, notice in the screen, Acumatic has added a side panel called results by item. And if we restore this screen so we can see both at the same time, you can see that Acumatica, if we select the Acer laptop, is showing us everything we need for these particular items. Now the Acer laptop computer, of course in the sales demo, has quite a bit of activity. So let's switch to an item that we just created in the laptop bag. So we're requiring, our requirements plan is five of them. So therefore our projected on hand quantity at that interval will be five. But we have a sales order and a non-stock kit that is going to deduct five and therefore we're going to be left with zero. Now based on your safety stock and whatever you have set up here in this item, the system will always try to leave you with that amount. Barring any kind of max quantity or lot quantity that you've given. So this gives you a lot of information about what's needed and why. And of course you have the links to the sales order or the particular document that is affecting these quantities. If we close the side panel, again, you see that we need five of them all throughout. And if we scroll over to the right, you'll get more information. We need five of them because of these related documents. If there's any parent documents, for example, a blanket order, you'll see that. And these are the promise dates and the action dates. So keep in mind, when we're looking at our sales order, you have these promise dates, these requested dates that customers have given you. And you could do that per line item. So this is 123. If we change this, then the system will reflect that accordingly in the inventory display. Why is that important? It's important because you can create filters or sort by dates and order the items that you need just in time for accommodating the customer to their requested dates. So we've selected these items. We'll click Purchase and we'll click Create. These items have a default vendor, so the system will use that as a purchase order, but we can define that for each purchase order we create, the default vendor. So now we've created that purchase order. And if we go look for it, here it is right here. There's all our quantities. There's the vendor. We'll take it off hold. We'll approve it. I have approval maps on. And we'll receive it just for the purposes of this demo. So we'll release this purchase receipt. All the quantities, the receipt quantities are set to five. So we're receiving everything. And now we can go in and we can create this shipment. You'll notice the item we're trying to ship is this laptop bundle. It's a kit. The location is split because if we click on line details, you can see all the individual items and their individual quantities. You can move these fields around if you need to. The pick ticket will also show all the individual items that the picker should be picking. And you'll see that on the pick, pack, and ship warehouse screens as well for scanning. 
So now we can confirm the shipment. And when you look at the inventory details for all of these individual items, you'll see that each of those quantities, we asked for five and our kit specifications was including one component per each. So all five have been deducted. So if we go in and take a look at, for example, our laptop bag, and we look at our inventory transaction history, this nice little side panel here, we've shown it from 2023 R1, and we maximize this. You'll see that we received five of them. And if we minimize this, and we go over to our shipment and we prepare the invoice, we'll see that our inventory will get updated. All of these processes can be automatically scheduled when you need to, but, but we're going to do it by hand here. And if we go back to our inventory history here and refresh, you can see that we brought in five. Our beginning quantity was zero. It's a brand new item. Quantity in five, ending quantity five, just like the system projected. And then our invoice, our beginning quantity was five, but we went out with five. So now we're left with zero. So that's non-stock kit replenishment using distribution requirements planning. In order to turn this on, you go into enable features. If you don't have it on already, you click modify and you'll scroll down to our distribution requirements planning. So again, these are two separate methods of replenishing your inventory. Distribution requirements planning is borrowed from the manufacturer's requirement planning. So it has a lot more functionality than the older inventory replenishment. So it's a good idea to check it out. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this or anything else at Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. And for watching our video, clicking the like button and subscribing to our channels. Have a great day.